is this thing on? My name is Bryce and welcome to Malazan Anonymous. I got to be honest, I can't get enough Malazan and I've been really looking forward to this video for a while. I'm back in my original spot so we can get all bookery and book snobbish again because I was totally doing that before. And anyway, I wanted to uh, try to convince everyone as if more convincing was needed with literally everyone reading Malazan right now to read Malazan. <laughs> so that's my goal here. I, uh, a long time ago on my blog, Only the Best Sci-Fi Fantasy, I wrote a post. It was called Why You Should Read Malazan, Book of the Fallen, or A Love Note to Steven Erickson. Okay, not really the latter, but it, and that actually was the whole stupid title, but uh, it was, it's been the most popular post on the site. Uh, it's been, I copied the same thing to Goodreads. It's been uh, relatively popular there too. I like to think I've convinced a healthy amount of people to read Malazan, and I'll get into why I get to pronounce it that way in a second, just in case you're going to correct me. And uh, it's so Malazan is one of my favorite series. I think I've stated this on Twitter or, or other places. I, I ha in my top ten fantasy series, I think this might have even overtaken Lord of the Rings for me, which has been my all-time favorite for ages. And the the series which I've essentially attempted to recreate, and by that I mean fall into another world where I'm enamored with everything and can't get enough of it. Um, Malazan's done that and it is essentially constantly fighting for my number one. Next time I read Lord of the Rings, that'll probably go back to number one. But Malazan right now that I've, I'm, I'm in the bone hunters right now in my reread. It's so good. It's so good. And that's why I wanted to do this video and why I'm excited to do this video. Now I'm no AP Canavan or Philip Chase. So where, when I watch them, I go, maybe I shouldn't be attempting to talk about Malazan because they do such a good job with it. They're leaps and bounds ahead and, and then mine's like, dude, isn't it cool how they have like super cool dragon fights? Yeah, that's so cool. So so that's pretty much where my analysis goes. I am not the academic. Uh, I probably went to, well, I'm not gonna go there. Uh, I went to grad school at least, um, so, but I'm not doctor material, that's for sure. So I wanted to get into, finally, all right, thousand minutes into this video, why read Malazan? Malazan, I know a lot of people go into this a bit trepidatious, is it, that's a word, and they, it's, it's one that you, you get a lot of fear, a lot of uh, reticence. It, it's a scary series to jump into because it's, I mean, it's got a lot of history. First of all, it's just 10 is the main series, 10 books that are healthy. I mean, what are these 1200 pages of pop uh, at the latter half? And, uh, and so you have that. And then you've got the, the other series, you've got the ice series, the Ian Cameron Esselmont, his Malazan Empire, which might be around here somewhere. There we go. Nope, too high. And so you've got oh, it's not even over there either can you see that maybe okay anyway so we've got some ice all over here sorry and um you've got all those you've got more series coming out but the main ones is you've got to just read are these ones and they are they they're known for being you just you're dropped into things you're dropped into things and you don't know where you are and what's going on and you just kind of have to figure things out now the thing is, it's it's part of I think the draw, and and <laughs> here's what gets really fun is that you get dropped into the first book and you have no idea what's going on. You finally uh, maybe reach uh, you know a good thick portion and you finally start kind of start getting things. You get to the next one, whole new characters dropped in again, square one. Third one, you get some actually finally back into things. Uh, fourth, you start out completely new. Fifth, you really start out completely new because at least the fourth one had some, some relatively new characters. Anyway, so I know I could keep going on like that, but 
it's I'm going to get into it in a second, but I just want to make sure that we've all been there and it's okay. And if you just read through it, it's going to be awesome. Um, one of the best things about Malazan is that your climaxes and just tw climax to the end of the book is just incredible. I've read so many fantasy series and I, that I've loved. I'm just saying why this one puts it up to the top is I, I've read so many where, you know, it's, it, it's, you know, it's interesting enough. You keep going and then you get this great climax in the last hundred pages, maybe, and oh, that was good. Maybe last 50 pages. You kind of have to wait for it. In pretty much most Malazan books, we're talking last 200, 250, maybe even 300 pages is just pure, unadulterated, crazy awesomeness. And again, I told you, see, I'm no, <laughs> I'm no academic here, but it is so brilliant. And you're just, you can't help but just keep reading your eyes out. So I cannot recommend this enough. That's even just the basics. But if you really want to go even deeper, which I think is worth it. Now, what even gets even, I guess, more exciting for me, and this isn't going to sound like it because it does sound academic. One of the things is this is a postmodern series. And if you talk to, uh, or I talk to, <laughs> because I talk to him. No, I don't talk to him ever. Uh, I would love to talk to uh, Mr. Erickson. But if you read uh, Mr. Erickson's interviews that and his, his blog that he has, he does consider this postmodern. And you can definitely see it. Postmodern is essentially, it's almost, it's almost self-referential. And I'm sure, again, I'm not the English professor. You guys are probably. But it's self-referential. It's, it's, you know, your experiences kind of dictate where things go and, and what truth is and, and, and this kind of idea of that. Um, and and I, that's really not only um, just part of what the whole series is about. It's, it's these different cultures. And what's great is that Steven Erickson is an anthropologist who has studied different kinds of cultures and races and all these things. And, and he's really brought that here that you get so many different races and then you get different names for different things and, and then they'll, or different names for the same thing and different name for the same character, uh, which I know sounds frustrating, but it, it brings you into this world because that's what it is. That's what history is. It's this, it's its own thing. You are drawn in. This is a whole world unto itself and it brings you into it. And that's part of that whole getting dropped into the middle of things the brilliance of that is that is postmodern in, in and of itself it's you're experiencing things along with these characters you don't know what's that they don't know what's going on i mean a lot of what who you follow is the grunts in the military other people like that, that just don't quite know what's going on you do have some glimpses of of gods and ascendants and and again and, it, and i could just go off on that on how cool those concepts are and and getting you know immortals becoming immortal and and just the, the geek side of me it brings all that out but also this this side that you're going holy cow how did he do this how did he drop me in this world where the first time i read dead house gates i had a hard time because and i realized i was feeling like i was in the desert that's why i was struggling once i kind of go like oh yeah you're not actually in that desert but it just made it so real and when i realized that and appreciate that holy cow it's amazing uh, what he's done there. Um, I, I'm trying not to make this a thousand year long video, uh, but those are the, the main things that I, they just excite me about this series is you are dropped in that as part of it. There are, there's, there's poetry and epigraphs and, um, and, and they're part of it. That's it's part of this whole um, postmodern part of the book, this whole postmodern kind of, I don't want to say theme, but that's, that's the, the, the postmodernism of the book that it, it's kind of up to your interpretation. It's up to each kind of character in it has their own interpretation of this. Each culture has their own gods that they worship. And, and depending on that God, that's the, you know, or the level of worship of that God or, or something like that, that can depend on how much God that, that God or, or ascendant has to do with the people. And, um, and I guess I should just say God, but the, 
but what gets, I think, my favorite part about this series, and this is why I, I try to tell people, look, you've got to push through the hard stuff and the confusion is because I've never seen an author trust his readers like Steven Erickson does. And I think as someone with as big of an ego as I have, it's important. <laughs> um, but he trusts you. He knows that you're going to pick these things up and eventually, and, and again, not even everything absolutely matters that you pick it up. It's insanely, insanely fun to reread these though. I will say you start, you pick up so many more things and I'm not even promising that I pick up everything, but to see just the things that you could pick up uh, on a reread is so much fun. But again, he trusts you on that first read even. I had a blast. I had no idea what was going on for most of these books, but I still loved those endings. One of the things, and I'll probably be flashing up my reviews or whatever, that I do want to correct on my original Goodreads review. I, I did make mention of the characters because on reread, and I, hadn't, I did that review, I mean, multiple years ago, let's just say. And uh, I'm, as, I'm as ancient as the Talani Mas. Um, but uh, one of the things that I, I want to correct, though, is is I made mention of the, the characters being weak, and I know that's kind of something that a lot of people will bandy about. But on reread, and, and again, maybe this is just knowing the characters as well as I do now, I, I disagree with that statement I first made. On, on really a full... Uh, getting into multiple rereads of the books, these care. I mean, there's a reason why I was devastated at the end of this book. There's a reason my mind was blown at the end of this book. My, my, but I was devastated. I don't. I don't think I could pick up another book for weeks after reading this book and this one. These two, devastated. I, I mean, I, I don't cry easily, but I pretty much was as as. And, and I don't think it was even a, a, it wasn't really a tear jerk. It was just so utterly sad. And I know it's like, hey, read this. It's sad. I, I don't mean that, but I mean, read this, feel real emotions for these characters. And I don't think after feeling those emotions for these characters that you can really say in any way that these characters are not done extremely well. And that's the other thing is that's the postmodernism that those characters they're not just going to go hey i'm a blacksmith who likes to do this this and this and i am hard-headed and so every time you look at me i'm going to be super hard-headed don't worry about that they're they're real and they're going to have perspectives and holy cow i just i can't get enough of this i can't recommend it enough i i know those people that have recommended it to that have read it have just absolutely loved it obviously there's going to be <laughs> some bites there some um but i have i've i've literally i've walked lots of people through on my goodreads page on messages direct messages through goodreads people going hey you know you wrote this review can you watch like hell, what's going on here and just walking people through some stuff doing a reread and, and doing a read with people in malazan and just answering things is so much fun um, I also have a theory, and I could probably be corrected, but I don't think you can be spoiled in this series. Now, obviously, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I honestly, that's a theory. It's a going theory. I just I feel like I had a couple things minorly spoiled because I was heavily involved in online forums for a while, and I think it only helped because it actually cleared up some of my confu confusion, <laughs> um, but because I knew kind of what things were leading to, but just one of the most rewarding experiences that you're going to get in fantasy reading, in any reading, to be honest. I think more books should be written this way, in a way that, you know, they're all unreliable narrators, almost all of them, I guess, pretty much all of them. And I just, I can't get enough. And then I, I brought up some quotes, I'm going to get really in your face here. Um, some quotes that not only is this, uh, you know, am I passionate about it because I, it makes you feel emotions? It's one of the funniest series I've ever read. Tayhol and Bug, am I even pronouncing it right? But Tail and Bug are just hilarious. Um, and then, so you have things like, or Croup, who I love, Krupp, Krupp, I call him Croup. 
uh, one of his quotes, such is the vastness of his genius that he can outwit even himself. I mean, just, and I, I don't, I'm not going to do any of these justice because in the context, it's just hilarious. But then you have from hilarity and the Marines are typically the funny ones, but not always because they kind of have this morbid sense of humor. Then you have down to uh, just quotes like this. That, I mean, how can you get... Uh, anyway, I'll just read it. We humans do not understand compassion. In each moment of our lives, we betray it. I, we know of its worth, yet in knowing, we then attach to it a value. We guard the giving of it, believing it must be earned, Talani Moss. Compassion is priceless in the truest sense of the word. It must be given freely in abundance. I mean, the brilliance of, of quotes like that, and I am endlessly quoting Malazan. Uh, I cannot recommend this enough. Get through it. Do it. It's worth it. It's so rewarding. He trusts you. What author trusts you that much that you're just going to get it? And then on top of it, as Logan Ninefinger says... It's better to do a thing than to live with the fear of it. Hey, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.